This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Over the last week or so, Ukrainian forces have staged a truly unprecedented counteroffensive, driving Russian occupying forces almost entirely out of the Kharkiv Oblast while continuing to apply pressure to Russian positions around Kherson and Donbass. So, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the most recent developments, what they mean for the war going forward, and whether this will provoke an escalation from Putin. So let's start by looking at just what's happened. As we detailed in our previous Ukraine video, for the last few months or so, it's looked like the Ukrainians were planning a counteroffensive in the south, around the city of Kherson, which the Russians captured back in March. Accordingly, Russia redeployed some of its forces from the north and east to the south, leaving its other fronts more vulnerable than they might otherwise have been. Ukrainian forces then staged a surprise counteroffensive in Kharkiv, first taking the town of Balaklaya before moving forwards towards Kupiansk. Now, when the counteroffensive first began late last week, taking Kupiansk would have been a good result for the Ukrainians. It lay 50 kilometers behind the Russian front lines and acted as the main supply route into Izium, where Russia has a significant number of troops deployed as part of a campaign to take Sloviansk and Kramatorsk, the two remaining Ukrainian holdouts in Donbass. As you can see from this map, major rail lines run from Russia to Izium run through Kupiansk, as do the two largest roads into Izium. However, over the last few days, the Ukrainians have outperformed even the most optimistic predictions, taking not only Kupiansk, but basically all of the Kharkiv Oblast, including Izium itself, which was captured on Sunday. While it's hard to say for certain because the Ukrainian advance is moving so fast, which makes vital communications hard to come by, as of Wednesday afternoon, it looks like the front lines have stabilized along the Ozkil River in Kharkiv and along the Seversky Donetsk River in Luhansk, which means that the Ukrainians have recaptured about 6,000 square kilometers worth of territory. For context, this represents an area about four times the size of Greater London, or about two and a half times the size of Luxembourg. On top of this, there have been some reports of Ukrainian forces making progress in a couple of towns along the Seversky Donetsk, including Svaitorhersk and Kremina. At time of writing, there seems to be an ongoing battle over the town of Lyman. If the Ukrainians can capture Lyman, which seems likely given recent events and the fact it's essentially surrounded, then they'll be well placed to mount an offensive against the Severnodonetsk and Lysiansk two adjacent towns with pre-war populations of around 100,000, which the Russians spent many costly weeks capturing back in late June. This will put real pressure on Russia's eastern campaign in Donbass, where Russian forces are trying to take Kramatorsk and Slovansk, the two remaining Ukrainian holdouts in the region. Russian forces in Donbass have already basically stalled, which means they'll probably struggle if the Ukrainians open up another front around Lysiansk and Severodonetsk. All in all, the Ukrainian advance around Kharkiv has been so ridiculously successful that it now threatens to undermine Russia's efforts in Donbass, the territory claimed by the Russian-backed Luhansk and Donetsk People's Republic. And to top it all off, the Ukrainian advance in Kherson, which had previously stalled, appears to be gathering momentum. Ukrainian forces are now within 15 kilometers of the city, and there have been reports that Russian forces have recently retreated from Kaiselivka, a key logistical hub for Russian forces in the area. There have even been reports from Ukraine's Southern Command, as of yet unconfirmed, that Russian soldiers in Kherson have reached out to organize a mass surrender. Again, to reiterate, these reports are unconfirmed, but it's nonetheless clearly true that things are going better for Ukraine in Kherson than before. So you get the idea. Things are going pretty terribly for the Russians at the moment. On to the second part of this video. What does this mean for the future trajectory of the war? Well, it doesn't look good for Putin here. The success of the Ukrainians will massively damage Russian morale and increase partisan activity in occupied areas. Pro-Ukrainians living under Russian occupation will be more likely to stage attacks against the occupiers because they'll assume the Russians will be gone soon, while Russian sympathizers in these areas will be less likely to cooperate because they'll be worried about being punished by the Ukrainians when they eventually return, as currently looks likely. This has already happened in certain areas. 
In Kharkiv, teachers caught teaching Russian propaganda to children, many of whom were shipped into the region from Russia, are now facing up to 15 years in jail. The recent Ukrainian advance will also convince the West that their support really does make a difference, and probably encourage further arms shipments. Dmitro Kuleba, Ukraine's foreign minister, made this point on Tuesday, when he told Politico that there should be no doubt now that Ukraine can win, and therefore that the more military support we receive now, the faster this war will end. Already, there have been credible reports that France is planning to significantly step up its support for Ukraine. And while Schultz has so far been conspicuously reluctant to accelerate arms shipments, the CDU are currently pushing for more support, and Schultz's position looks increasingly untenable. Again, you get the idea. It looks like things are only going to get worse for Putin here. So what can he do? Well, standard military theory will tell you that if he wants to stand a chance of winning the war, he'll have to escalate. We already saw a bit of this on Sunday, when, for the first time, Russian missiles targeted Ukrainian energy infrastructure, causing widespread blackouts in the north and east. Similarly, there's been a lot of speculation that Putin will have to declare a general mobilization to achieve the manpower required for victory. However, while this might make sense from the perspective of military theory, escalation does come with serious risks. Escalation carries political risks for the Kremlin and will most likely harden Western support for Ukraine while making any future occupation of Ukrainian territory more difficult. A general mobilization, for example, might be difficult to sell given that the Kremlin has strenuously insisted that this is only a, quote, special military operation, and it would be a pretty sharp ideological turn for Putin, who made it his mission to move away from mass conscription when he came into power in the 2000s. It would also take, at minimum, a few months, and it's not even clear that the Russian state has the bureaucratic and administrative capacity to pull it off. Nonetheless, whilst escalation might be risky, it's not clear what other options Putin has at this point, and what he decides to do in the next few days will have a massive impact on the outcome of the war. If you can't wait for more TLDR to find out, then you can find more exclusive TLDR content exclusively on Nebula. That's the streaming service we created with our creator friends and where you can find a bunch of TLDR videos which never make it to YouTube. You can also find all of our other videos on there ad-free and get some of our videos there early. Signing up also really helps out the channel and helps us make more content, not only for Nebula subscribers but everyone else too. So if you want more from us and to support the channel, then you can get it for less than $15 a year if you sign up to the Nebula Curiosity Stream bundle. Let me explain. We've partnered with the superb streaming service Curiosity Stream, where you can find some superb documentaries about all kinds of fascinating topics. If you sign up to their service, you'll get Nebula absolutely free. That's both streaming services for just over a dollar a month. A crazy good deal to get all those documentaries on CuriosityStream and also more TLDR on Nebula. Thanks for your support.